You should make a small video about compositing. Would love a Photoshop tutorial. How do you put the other sunset behind the skyline? Would you be thinking of making a video of how you Photoshop? Do you have a vid explaining how you combine the photos in Photoshop? For hundreds of years, people have asked me to do this tutorial, and guess what? I'm not doing it. I'm sorry. Fuck, I mean like, I would, but then what's in it for me, you know? What, what do I get from it? I show you, and then what do I get? You can't give me a hug, you can't- Okay, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, we're about to do this shit. Let's get it. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I created this photo. It should be on your screen right now, and if it's not, then you should call your optometrist because you can't see shit. So, this is your basic Photoshop introductory screen. This is like where all your tools are. This is where the pictures that you loaded in are found, and you're probably thinking, Wait, Michael, where are the cars in the circle here? Well, that's what I'm going to show you right now. I wanted to make this video to show you how to effectively composite, which is what I did in this photo to get like that effect. So I have four different images that I took at this spot that are loaded into my Photoshop right now. So I have this one with my hand and my broken ass ND filter right here. And then I have an in-focus picture of what I was looking at. It was one of the coolest sunsets that I've ever seen, and even without the hand and the filter, I feel like this would still be such a dope image. And then I have two separate out-of-focus ones. This is the first one with the bus on the left side. I thought it was dope that it, I caught it like that. And then the right side is this car. I thought it looks cool. It kind of looks like a little fly, if you think about it, you know? Like, look at, the, look at this little fly. Actually, no, this looks like a fly. But, so, to move, so what you want to do is you, oh my god, Bro, a fly just landed on my screen. I'm not even joking. Hold up. Let me kill this. Oh, fuck. Okay. Um, I missed. Didn't break my laptop, but it was pretty close. But anyway, basically what you want to do is load all of these images into one category or like one of these little boxes up here. I don't, I don't know what they're actually called. So what you want to do to do that is you click on the move tool, which is up here in the top left. And then you just drag into one of the images. I just picked this one at random. And then, and then you drag it and then you position it so it's all even like this one. These purple lines show that it's even. There we go. The fly is back on my computer, but I really don't give a shit. So I'm going to drag this one into that same space as well. Where is it? Oh, there it is. So there it is. We just dragged it in like that. And I'm going to do the same for this last one here. And then it takes a little while to load because my computer is slow as fuck for some reason, but that's okay. And then after we do that, we're just going to exit out of these other ones. Fuck off, fly. So we could just exit out of the other ones after we do that because we don't really need them anymore. Now, if you look in the bottom right, we have four different layers here. So we have each of the images. If I like click on the little eyes, it'll, sh it'll make them either visible or invisible, as you can tell. Okay, so... What I did first is... Fuck off, fly, dude. I'm actually so annoyed at this dumbass fly. Holy shit. So what you want to do right now is you want to get the layers in the correct order. And what I did was I moved the in-focus layer up to the second most visible one. You obviously... I So I want the hand to be on top. So what I did was I moved the picture that's in focus to the one right below the hand. So if I make the hand invisible, the cars are right underneath. So I'm gonna go back to this. And then what I did is I clicked on this right here. And this is the polygonal lasso tool. There's three different options you can choose. You could use any of these, but I prefer this one because it's like what I've been doing the whole time. So you zoom in and you can see kind of clearly like where the circle is inside of the filter, which is what I'm gonna cut out of the image. So what you wanna do is you wanna take the tool and you press on your, and you press on the mouse and then you drag and then you kind of connect the line on your screen to the line in the picture. So you like slowly cut out the middle of the circle as like, I, like I'm doing right now. Basically you want to do this, I'm just going to speed this up, insert cool time lapse here. So after that dope ass time lapse. Now we have this circle selected. I connected it to where I started down here. I went all the way around with that little lasso. And now we're looking at this. So I can zoom out and show you from a bigger picture. Um, and basically how you cut this out, it's really simple. You just have to select the layer that you wanna cut. And then you just press the backspace key or the delete key on a Mac and then boom. 
now you have cars in the center of your image right here. And you're probably thinking, wow, this is already looking pretty good. Well, guess what? It'll get even better in a second. So now what you wanna do is just press the W key on your keyboard right now. Just press W. Well, not while you're watching this video, but like while you're in Photoshop. And W is the quick selection tool, which you can also find here, but I just prefer pressing W because it's like a quick shortcut. And basically what this does is when you drag along the picture, it'll automatically select your edges for you so that you can just cut it like that. I couldn't do it with the center of this because it's too dark inside here for me to like get an accurate cut, you know? Like th these edges down here are like not as visible as my hand is compared to like the background. So I couldn't do it there. That's why I had to use the polygonal lasso. I hope that makes sense. Like I hope, I hope you guys understood that. But basically what you wanna do is you want to cut out the rest of the background from the hand picture because the hand picture was only focused on my hand and then the rest of the background was just completely blurry with nothing barely visible. So I'm just going to cut that out. Oh wait Michael, why is the in focus part right there? Well we're going to cut that out too. So we select the in focus part here. And then we also press backspace on that. And now you can kind of see like what this is turning out to be. So the bus is right here, which is like, this is almost what the original looks like. There's a car on the other side here, but I'll get to that in a second. And basically what I did was I just kept cutting out the background of the image of my hand. So you press control D or command D to deselect that first one. And then you just want to hit W again and just keep doing it all the way around. And sometimes the quick selection tool messes up and it'll like select something that you don't want to happen. In that case, you, you should use the polygonal lasso and zoom in all the way to like select the correct part. Like this is obviously really accurate right now, but sometimes when the edges aren't that defined, you have to use the polygonal lasso just to like make sure that what you're cutting out looks good. So I have the rest of it selected here. I'm just gonna cut it from the top layer. And then you also wanna delete it from the in focus layer. And now, and now the one that's visible on the top and bottom is layer two, which is the picture of the bus right here. As you can tell, if I press the eye, the hand goes away. And if I press this, the in focus part goes away. And now the rest of the picture that's visible is layer two with the bus. And the car is still down here and we haven't gotten to that part yet. It sounds really confusing, but it's really not that difficult. It just takes a lot of patience and practice. And then once you get these little steps down, like you could do it with almost any image. I've used composites in a lot of my pictures and I find it really useful when you want something, when you don't see what you wanna see when you're shooting. So you add it in later. And I feel like that's really useful when it comes to photography. I kind of feel like that's the future, you know? But what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna switch back to my polygonal lasso right up here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to layer 2 and select it and then since this car is only on the right side of the road basically all I need to do is cut out this part of the top layer so that's exactly what I'm gonna do so I remember where the car was in the image so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go like this and I can just kind of twist right here and just cut like this because that's all I really need in the image. So I connected it here and then I just press backspace or delete and then bam, you have the car right here, you have the bus right here, and then you have the hand and the in focus picture right here. And that's basically it. That's basically all I did with this photo. There wasn't anything else that I did to this photo. This was my entire process while I was editing it the first time. I just felt like recreating it for this video. I thought it would be really helpful and I hope you guys learned something. And if you have any other questions about like what you're looking at in Photoshop, like the feather or like what these tools are and if you need them, um, just ask me in the comments or I could do another video like this in the future. I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, I really like how this picture came out. I didn't think it would look this good when I was first taking it. I'm gonna switch back to my normal camera now. Peace out. But yeah, that's been the video. Um, I really hope you guys like this one. I took a lot of time on it. Leave a like if you like this and subscribe for more videos like this. Um, I'm also gonna be doing more vlogs in the future too. I know you guys like that a lot. Also, I just wanted to thank you guys for a thousand subscribers. That's actually pretty crazy. I have something in store for that. It's not gonna be like just me saying thank you. Um, I'm actually gonna be doing something cool in the future to, to honor that. And and it's gonna involve all of you, so hopefully you're excited for that. Other than that, that's all I really wanted to say. Thank you so much. 
You guys make me really happy. Thank you for 50k on Instagram. That's insane. And yeah, that's basically it. Later.